Hi there, my name is Marty Owings, and today I'd like to show you how to do some simple graphite washes. Today we'll use some really good watercolor paper here. This is 100% cotton cold press, but you could use any paper really that will take a, a little bit of water or mixed media. We're going to use a special pencil today as well. This is called a graphite wash pencil. And this particular one happens to be a Faber-Castell, which I'll talk about a little bit more. But when you use it, it pretty much acts like a regular pencil until you add water. And then something really neat happens. You can actually paint with the graphite. So we'll I'll do a couple demonstrations today, show you how to do that, and maybe give you a tip on a couple other techniques. If you enjoy the content I produce on the channel and you're interested in getting exclusive access to additional content, pop over to my cup of coffee page. That a link can be found on my YouTube uh, homepage or in the comments section of this video. All you have to do is pop over there. You can help support the channel in two different ways. You can become a sustaining member, which really helps. You can make a $1 donation or any denomination of donation, which really helps as well. Or you could buy um, one of my books, that Field Sketches book, is a collection of sketches I've done out in the wild, in the field, over the past 10 years or so. So please help support the channel by popping over to the Cup of Coffee site and dropping a little love there. All right, so back to the demonstration here. I'm going to use the graphite pencil today, but I also wanted to mention that this is a very high quality uh, Faber-Castell graphite aquarelle pencil, but, but basically it doesn't have to be this fancy. I think there are a number of different uh, graphite wash pencil makers out there, including generals. If you want to save some, some money and just practice, that's, that's great too. And I'm going to use a pretty decent watercolor paper here, but again, you can use it on any kind of a paper that accepts mixed media or wet media. So I'm going to draw a little pine tree here. I love to draw trees. They're, they're some of my favorite parts of the landscape. And so very interested in the look and feel of trees. And in my neck of the woods in Minnesota, we have quite a number of, of pine trees. So we have both carnivorous and deciduous trees around here. But if the further north, north you go, the more carnivorous trees you see. So a lot of there's a lot of pine trees up there. So what I'll do here is, you, you see I drew the rough shape of the pine tree in there and even the bark with the pencil. And now I'm using this Pentel water brush to go in and, and add a little bit of uh, paint to it, actually. I'm turning that graphite into paint by just wetting it. And that's the beauty of that particular pencil. So here you can see I've left that side light where it's dark over here on this side because this tree has light from the left and it's darker over on the right. So you could say west facing light and east facing shadow. So that's the light side right there and you wanna leave that be a little light so it looks like light is hitting it. And on this side, you've got shadow. So it looks like that half of the tree is in darkness. So that it's one of those simple things that people that are new at drawing kind of get wrong with any object. They forget where the light is at. So what I'll do here is I'll kind of do um, a scaled up view of this part of the tree here. Not maybe an exact replica, but what I wanted to do is kind of give you an up close view of how I draw this bark. This is a pretty small sheet of paper but we'll, this will give you a better feel for how you can go in and use that water brush to turn this graphite into paint so i'm not too fussy about the little pieces of bark here um i'll i just kind of randomly put them in and the more random you are the more it's going to look like a real tree so if you try to make it look exactly perfect it it, it rarely comes out very well or it doesn't look realistic now here you can see I'm darkening the shadow a little bit just to make it a little bit more pronounced. And that's all you need is this, this pencil and that water brush or any brush with water for that matter. For this second demonstration, I want to draw a little tiny distant landscape. So you see I put the horizon line in first and now I'm kind of decorating some trees there 
way in the distance. They, these aren't meant to be up close so that you see every leaf on the tree or anything like this. This is this is just think of this as, you know, a quarter mile in the distance or half mile down the road. And you're looking at these trees from a far off distance through this field. And and then there's these trees sitting there. So I don't have to be too fussy about the detail. I just put a little enough graphite in there to add some contrast between the dark and the light. And again here, if you're paying attention to kind of where the light is coming from, it's coming from the sky, but coming from the west. So it's shining kind of like, you know, it would be, um, you know, whatever time of the day where the sun is kind of coming down at that angle. And so there's shadow under the tree. And um, so that's pretty easy to do. Now for this little landscape, I'm going to add just a little bit of color. I'm going to start with the sky. And yeah, I'm just going to randomly put this in here. And I want to show you a technique. So if you take a little bit of tissue and you smush it together, don't you don't have to be too specific about how you do it. And then you just dab it into the watercolor before it's dry. You can start to see some random clouds beginning to form in your paint. And then that'll be especially true when we get up close. You can see how can add a little color in here and just keep dabbing it until you get kind of a realistic cloud pattern in there. And it's it's really nice to be able to do that because it, it creates a looseness or a boundary in the clouds that's that's very loose to, loose and soft like clouds are. So adding just a little bit more contrast or darkness under those trees, some birds in the distance, and then just a little bit of shadow or shade underneath those trees because they're going to be casting a little bit of a shadow beneath them. And I think that's where I'll leave this little landscape. If I work it anymore, I'll probably overwork it. So I'll just leave it here and call that good. Going back to the demonstration pine tree here I, I drew and painted a little earlier. I wasn't unhappy with it, but I didn't like the texture on this side of the scaled up view. So I went back in and added a little bit more texture there. You can see I'm just going to mark that in a little bit, add a little bit more wash to it or water. I use a tissue to kind of lighten up that side. And then I wanted to add a little color to it because it's not a dead tree. At least I don't want it to be. So yeah, I just wanted to add a little color in there. And you could soften the edge, the boundary where the color hits the light in a tree a little bit more. Maybe add a little color very very light amount of color on that left side and you'd be fine well that's pretty much it for the demo today uh, i hope you picked up a technique or two here um, in these two little demonstration drawings and if you did well then i'll be happy drop a, a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think or if you've tried these techniques before yourself all right that's it for today this has been marty for owings art dot com.